Well, the charging is really interesting here because we have the Tesla superchargers. Now these are exclusive Teslas, so it's not an open to all. You can't charge here unless you're a Tesla. And that's why every single car here is a Tesla. Uh, the, there are no chargers on the north side for Tesla. So if, you, if you're heading north as we are, uh, when we come off the motorway, we come into the northbound services, there is a route through, just follow your uh, display. Uh, it will take you there, it takes you back over the motorway, the back route, you go past the no entry sign. Uh, we've been told that's just a legal formality to stop people using it. Yeah, okay, but it doesn't have any legal standing. Um, so you can nip from one side to the other. So here, we're on the southbound side. Uh, so when we want to go again, we're gonna have to go back to the northbound side and then leave the northbound services on the, mo on the M6 motorway, because we're heading north from here. Because one of the big things, though, is what's changed since we were last here. Yes, if uh, we're going to have to dig out all this video out, but uh, that was all soil, wasn't it? We had bulldozers bringing soil from over there, which was going to be the new lorry park. And actually, that's been expanded as well. So that has now been completed. They brought soil over here. They've leveled it all off. And we've now got a, 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 an extra car park over here. So they, when we uh, talked to the CEO uh, here last time, Nabil, um, he was saying that they are expanding the lorry side of it um, and trying to attract more lorries in. Uh, the car's already come here. But this is a fantastic location for the lakes. We're right on the edge of the lakes. Uh, so that's uh, it's all right. Now, as far as the Teslas go, uh, fairly safe, straightforward. Let me just check uh, what they are here. But these are, I think, 30... Uh, no, these are actually a little bit dearer. Um, let's have it... Oh, I got a notification. My charging is almost complete. Please, oh. please check. Um, I think that's because I've still got it set on 90%. Oh, no, it's approaching. Uh, 13 minutes to go. Oh, 13, yeah, we've got so, it. So, uh, just a warning, so if we were eating a meal and we got the warning, we know we've got a good bit of time. Um, but let's see if we can find the price here. Yeah, on the app it's not showing any, and that's because on the app it only shows open to all charges, so this one won't appear. Uh, we can look at this one on the screen. I believe it's about 40 pence per kilowatt hour, so this is on the high side here. Uh, others around are about 37p. But we've also got some of the Westmoreland chargers. They're a little different, aren't they? Yeah, well, if you can't use these as open to all, which you can't, then we have the Westmorelands. And these are famous, in my opinion, for one thing. They've got absolutely massive. It's a 32-inch screen on the front. Uh, they're showing here all sorts of advertising. Uh, so it's, it's fantastic. Uh, price 69p. Uh, Westmoreland also have locations at Kern Lodge, just up into Scotland. Uh, Reged, where we're going next. And um, uh, Gloucester, uh, where they are, again, opposite each other. Uh, so a really nice, nice layout. Uh, but here, if, you're, if this was open to all, um, this, this price would be under threat. But here, there's no threat at all. If you want to charge a non-Tesla car here, you pay 69 pence. But you also have to deal with those cables, which must be some of the thickest ones that uh, I've seen around. Yeah, we, had, um, we did a thing in Gloucester where they are absolutely amazingly heavy. That cable... Oh, yeah, it's really substantial. Nothing interesting on there that I can find. But it's delivering the same power, so it's yeah. it's not like the cables have to be thicker for um, than Teslas for any power yeah, well, reasons. I, I actually did a feature on this. What, what you have in here is two cables, a positive and negative, effectively, flow and return. Um, but the way a lot of companies do it is they run a tube uh, inside there, which is uh, full of uh, water, or it'll be glyco ethylene glycol antifreeze, uh, and that acts as a uh, heat sink. It will take heat uh, from out of here. However, running a tube inside here 
is not the most efficient way of taking heat out of the power cables. What Tesla have done and patented is they actually just have the power cables and the whole of this is full of the coolant fluid. And that means that each of those cables is totally encased in water and it's very much uh, more uh, very much more efficient at taking the heat out of the power cables and into the coolant fluid which goes around. And we'll just go over there in a second, we'll have a look at the difference in thickness. But that one, uh, pretty much, if I put my hand round, it's, it's, full, it's a full span. One other interesting thing to note, we do have a stop, a fast stop button in there. Let me just show that. Uh, there's a fast stop button, so if you want to stop the charge for any reason, then just press that. They've kind of fallen out of favour at a lot of stops because there were um, GridServe used to have ones that uh, did that as well and they've now moved away from that in their newer designs. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting one whether it's a good or a bad thing. Uh, from a bad side, if there's anyone malicious out there, they can press that and just stop your charging. Uh, whereas with a Tesla, you can't stop it. Uh, so anyone going past, the cable is locked when the car locks. Uh, there's no stop button. So you know if you plug in there and your car locks, which it does automatically when you walk away, uh, then you're going to get your charge. Whereas here, someone malicious could just go down the road pressing the stop button. Anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, what's really interesting to see is just the array of cars. Uh, we've got an MG, we've got a Kia, uh, we've got a... Um, you better get these right because uh, some people super. in the comments sometimes pull you up for getting uh, <laughs> oh, Kia's no. mixed up with things, isn't it? I'm terrible, yeah. We've got BMW, uh, iX3 and uh, Kia. Uh, so it's quite a, quite a selection. Uh, so one thing we notice with Tesla chargers, obviously the, they're just boring Teslas. Uh, what you also hear is all the fans going. Um, mine preconditioned on the way here, uh, but now when the power pumping into these, the fans fire up to try and keep the battery under control. Uh, but interesting to see um, customized cars like that. I'll have to uh, stop the uh, uh, audio suppression and things like that. Cause yeah, it's quite a noise coming from all of these vehicles with the fans. Yeah, uh, mine's all right. It'll, it, it will fire up shortly if I leave it charging, but I'm probably not going to. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. So in terms of open to all, this is not open to all, so you can't come here, but we are going to Regad, and that's about 20 mile up the road, something like that. Uh, and that one is a brand new one. We don't know if it's yet been connected. It has been installed, but we don't know if it's connected. And that one almost certainly will be an open to all. And that um, will be a welcome break on this, on this route. Because uh, apart from this one, which is Tesla only, your next one up is, um, is Carlisle. So I was mentioning cable size. And if you look at that, that is a staggering difference. Now these are 250, they're 300 shared. So 250, 300, not an awful lot in it. But that is a stunning difference uh, between the two cables. And obviously in terms of weight, uh, very much lighter to use, very much more flexible. Because uh, these are the V3s. V3s, yeah, uh, single cable. The V4s we've seen, they are a bit thicker than these ones, aren't they? They are, uh, and we'll find those up at Regged because uh, there are V4s there. So we can do a comparison. So let's see, so we know. Okay, we, it's a, a, good, a good point. We can do a comparison diameter of the, all the various cables. Because those uh, V4s are sort of future-proof to what, 500 kilowatts? Yes, but these cables are 500 kilowatts as well. Really? If you look on here, uh, here, it says uh, maximum current, Sorry, rated voltage 1000 volts DC and maximum current 425 amps. So that's uh, 450 kilowatts. So those are rated for 450 kilowatts. I was told they were 500. Right. Uh, but that's the cable, uh, not the charger itself. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see when the uh, V4s go up to the 500, whether that uh, necessitates a bigger cable or whether they're just gonna use these. Anyway, uh, we're going to disconnect. So let's just run through that process. Uh, so what we need to do, just make sure the car is unlocked. And then all we do, press the button, undo it, take my adapter out, 
that away and all the charging, the, well, not the charging, the payment now will be done automatically. We don't have to do anything. There is no payment terminal on here, no method of using this. It has to be done through the app. But once you're in the app, everything's fully automated. Right, so how much range have we added on there? Uh, very good question. What was it, 140 when we arrived? So we're now at... Uh, what have we got? Um, oh, 205. So it's actually filled it up again. So up right. to 90%. Fantastic. Uh, so that was interesting. So just good timing. So we're on our way and uh, going to Reggae. And then next stop after that is Newcastle. We're in the northeast of England. Right. That's let's it go. from here, isn't it? Let's go.